Amen. Thank you so much. Uh, beautiful Tilly. And that was shorter than I expected, but very um I thought my 20 minutes was up, that's why. No, it's okay. It's okay. Maybe I was enjoying it too much. I thought. <laughs> okay. It's okay. God bless you so so much. Amen. Yeah. So tonight we have um one of my young newfound nephews with us is Angelus, uh, a nine-year-old boy. His mother has been worshiping with her, fellowshiping with us, but uh, today she, she's in a conference. So Angelus has joined. Angelus. Angelus. Okay, muted. Right. But we thank God so much. And um, as I said tonight, we are going. To... Yes. Yes. How are you? I just wanted people to hear your voice. Okay. It's okay, Angelus. You cannot. You cannot. You can mute again. Let me mute you. Right. But um, before I move to tonight's message. Let me share something with us. I think for the past few days, I've been thinking about certain issues, somehow grieving over, over the way people treat us and all that. And um, I've not been too happy with certain things around certain people. And um, sometimes you feel like uh, we're from this betrayal, sometimes some disappointment and all that. So honestly, since Friday, I think um, I've not really been myself because I'm a very busy person. If you're around me, you may not know. And I also don't show these things. But deep down within me, I will, I've been thinking, of, so can people be this treacherous? Can people be this dangerous? We are, for some of us, we walk with our hearts. We walk with our free hearts and all that. And just like um, uh, there is this uh, story about the first time um, a baby mosquito went out and people were trying to kill it. And he came back home happy, jubilating and telling his mother, mommy, this is the first time I went out and everybody was clapping for me. Then the mother started shedding tears. Because the little one did not do, know that it was rather an attempt to kill him and not to <laughs> not clap him for him. Hello. Oh. Are you all with me? Yes. Yeah. Wow. Okay. Isinam, I miss you. Are you with me? I was going to call you when I saw you join. Uh, Mrs. Yeah. You didn't update me, you now. Your, your cane is here. Ouch. So you, you. Have, you have to test me when you be close. Ms. Okweje, uh, welcome for the first time. That's another colleague of mine. Thank you, Prof. One of the hardworking ladies. Okay, thank you. So, yes, um, and for me, when I go to church, one of the moments I don't miss is worship. Yeah. But even today, normally, normally, you know, mostly when I give messages here, I tell you people that those messages, the Holy Spirit dropped in my spirit while we were doing worship. Sometimes far in the morning, I will hear, I mean, worship, I don't play. But even today, worship, I couldn't feel worship. I was just in the church. Until when we were praying to go for communion, then the Holy Spirit just whispered to me. I mean, that's what changed me. That's what calmed me. That's what took away all the stress that I was going through within myself about betrayals and disappointments and all that. And the Holy Spirit just says, son, your blessings don't belong to those people. Mm -hmm. And beyond the blessings, look at the cross. Then quickly, I remembered three times I've seen the rapture, three times. One was when I started life as a teacher in 1999. I was a drunk, I was a womanizer and all that. 
I don't know why God showed me that. I saw the rapture, people going, and I didn't care. I mean, those were those times. Hmm. Then second time was, I think, 2013. 2013, I was doing God's work. I was leading the church in South Africa, and I saw it in broad daylight. I mean, I saw it in a dream. I saw it, people in the flash, people were going. Hmm. And none of them did I find myself being raptured. Then again in 2014, I saw the rapture again, 2014, 2013, 2014. And 2014, I didn't see myself going. I only saw myself suspending. So I realized, no, there's still work to be done. Then February, 2022, I was in Egypt. In the, all these, the three I've told you, it was in the night while I was sleeping. Now it was in the afternoon, February, 2022. My last, okay, I came back in March, at the end of March last year. I had worked and I was just sleeping in the couch in the hall in the afternoon. I shared that with you, but I'm just reminding us, God, I think we stress over so many things in life because we don't really see what lies ahead of us. And if we, even if we see what lies ahead of us, we are not enthused about it we are not encouraged to work towards the life after this one because all my stress was why have i opened my heart and done this for a b c d and now that person is also has left me behind and all that but i realized no number one the holy spirit told me son your blessings are not I remember when I was about to do my wedding, I was still a student. And one friend of mine, he's a pastor, a true man of God. He went to a shop and he said, my brother, when you are about to do your wedding, I'll buy you your suit for both Saturday and Sunday and your best man. Get into the wedding. This man didn't have money. And I could see him stressed. You know, he's a very honest person. I went to him and I said, my brother, when you buy it for me, you will not even appreciate God. Don't worry, God will provide. And God provided perfectly, perfectly. I went to a Muslim shop to buy a suit. And the man said, no, I will give you this one. The man discounted me over 60%. And it was even the one, the, the other suit for Sunday was even more beautiful than the actual one for the wedding. He said, no, I'll discount you 60% for two, you and your, 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 your best man. Then take this shoe. The man just kept, he's a Muslim. He just kept discounting. That's how God works. When we don't know what he has done for us before, we don't believe that he's going to do more than that. So I'm just sharing this with you, what the Holy Spirit shared with me this morning. Just trust me, Friday, Saturday, this morning, I, I was not the usual Samuel. My spirit was down. How could somebody so close do this but you know what god wants to in in romans is they all everything all things work for good not for those who trust men but for those who trust and love their who hello hello the lord, the lord. i'm the not lord. sure I'm, I'm, I'm alone here yes no i'm not okay, alone good. yes so i remember seeing in my sleep that afternoon, that, that brief sleep, that fire had engulfed everywhere. That means the rapture had come. Yeah. And I saw myself running with a few people. I don't think we'll be up to 10. Mm. There was only one street. And the fire had made an arc, you see, an arc like that. Mm. Like sometimes the way people plant grapes, especially grapes, and they will cross and then they will make a way in between, if you have seen that. So there was only one street. Every, we couldn't see left or right. Everywhere was on fire. And all we said was, let's run to the sea. So we started running towards the sea. And when we got to the sea and we thought, oh, when we get to the sea, at least there will not be any fire. But the question is, even if the, the sea was not on fire, 
can we stay on the sea for and float like Jesus for more than an hour without dying? But at that point in my dream, all that I was thinking was let's run to the sea. And I think God showed me that to see that I'm not even a faithful servant. Why should you tell people to go to the sea when the world is on fire and not look to Christ? So we got to the sea, the sea, the, the sea, the entire sea was on flames. And, and that is where Jesus told me, anybody who wants to make it should know that I am the only way. So the route that we used was not even safe. The sea was not safe. Only the sea, only Jesus. And so this, as, as we are about to praying to go for the communion, then in a second, the Holy Spirit spoke to me and he said, look to the cross. And I could just visualize Jesus with blood, his face so damaged that you cannot even recognize this uh, man. Brothers and sisters, this is not my message tonight. It's only an announcement. And I felt I have to share because I know all of us are going through that. We feel disappointed. We feel we feel we feel uh, betrayed. Uh, the promotion has not come. The marriage has not come. The child has not come. The money has not. Whatever I've not been able to finish paying my mortgage. I don't like my car. I don't have a car. I don't have a shoe. All these things are very temporary. What? The Holy Spirit dropped in my spirit today. Is a son. Your blessings are not in the hands of the people you are fretting about. And the next voice I heard was, look at the cross, focus on the cross. Whatever you are going through, something lies beyond this life. And that's where the focus should be. If you focus there, God will give us what we need here. Amen. 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 Well, that's not my message for tonight. So, um, I'll share this song. meditating alongside let's be praying let's be singing and um Billy really, you know how to sing this song before even time yeah, not everything though. My life was in his hand. He knows my name. He knows my every thought. He sees each day that falls and hears me when I call. Let's all sing, I have a father. I have a father. He calls me his own. He'll never
family. So tonight, the message God gave me to share with you is a very simple one. And from a very common Sunday school scripture, mm. my message is entitled, God knows you. Amen. Amen. How many of us believe God knows us? Yeah. I do. I believe. He knows you. Mm -hmm. Let us pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you. We thank you. We thank you. Tonight, your children are ready mm -hmm. to feed from your table. Mm -hmm. And so set my being aside and speak to your children. Speak to their very hearts. Speak to their souls, their minds, their bodies. And as your word come, give us deeper understanding and let your word be a weapon that destroys every work of the enemy. Father, let your word be backed by power and anointing. And so do what you do best, Father. Take the stage. When you are done, take all the glory. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Somebody quickly take Amen. us to Amen. Psalm 147. Somebody take us to Psalm 147. For another person take us to Psalm 12, 7. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Psalm 147. 147, 4. Yes. Verse 4. He counts the number of the stars. He calls them all by name. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. I've used this scripture a thousand times in my messages because it is established that there are more stars than human beings. Now, what is our number? Seven point what billion? What is the population of, uh, of, of, of people on Earth? We are about 7.9 now. Billion. Yes, 7.9 billion. 7.9 billion. And trust me, even your family, your extended family, when we call you to mention the names of everybody, even the men, only men or only women, there are some you will never remember. Mm. But the scientist is, I mean, the psalmist is very clear here that he knows all the stars in the skies. And he mm. calls each of them, just like you call your children, Amma, Silly, Esther, Chris. Mm. He knows all the stars in the skies. 
Mm. And he calls each of them by name. And so when I tell you Jesus knows you, irrespective of what you go through, believe me, he knows you. Mm. He knows you. He formed you. He gifted you with life. And he has promised that he will never leave nor forsake you. He says, I am the good shepherd. I lay down my life for my sheep because he knows his sheep. And what does Luke 12, 7 say? Luke 12, 7. Oh, nobody has a Bible. Hello. Hey, we are coming. Wow. We are coming. Look twelve. Look chapter twelve seven. Yeah. But the very hairs of your head are all numbered. Do not fear, therefore. You are you are of more value than many sparrows. Amen. Amen. So this is where Jesus encourages his children that even the very hairs on your head, no baba, no baba, no hairdresser, no whatever. No doctor has ever told us that every individual has the, this number of hairs. But the Bible is again very clear that even the hairs on your head, they are numbered not by man, not by your mom, not by your father, not by any your penny. They are numbered by God. And so he says, my son, my daughter, do not be afraid for even the sparrows in the air, I care for them. Hmm. And so tonight, when I tell you Jesus knows you, he knows you. I don't know who, for whom this message was sent to me, but I believe I am talking to somebody. I hmm. believe somebody here individually is being fed. And so let's go to a very common Sunday school scripture and I'll do some exposition in there and you understand that Jesus knows you. So quickly, let's go to Luke chapter 6. Jesus feeds 4,000, some say 5,000, some say 7,000, depending on whether you look at Matthew or Luke or Mark. But let's go to Luke chapter 6. No, Mark, Let, let's use the Mark. Let's use the, the one by Mark. Mark chapter 6. Mark 6. Mark 6, 34. 34 to 44. Mark 6, verse 34 to 44. Yeah. And Jesus, when he came out, saw a great multitude and was moved with compassion for them because they were like sheep, not having a shepherd. So he began to teach them many things. When the day was now fast spent, his disciples came to him and said, this is a deserted place and already the hour is late. Send them away that they may go into the surrounding country and villages and buy themselves bread, for they have nothing to eat. But he answered and said to them, you give them something to eat. And they said to him, shall we go and buy 200 denarii, denarii worth of bread and give them something to eat? But he said to them, have them, how many loaves do you have? Go and see. And when they found out, they said, 
five and two fish. Then he commanded them to make them all sit down in groups on the, on the green grass. So they sat down in ranks in hundreds and in fifties. And when he had taken the five loaves and the two fish, he looked up to heaven, blessed and broke the, the loaves and gave them to his disciples to set before them. And the two fish he divided among them all. So they all ate and went and were filled. And they took up 12 baskets full of fragments and of the fish. Now, Samuel, you are muted. Hmm. Okay. Sorry. Hello. You are muted. Hello. Yes, you were muted, Sammy. Sorry. Uh, uh, and, and when he had taken the five loaves and the two fish, he looked up to heaven, blessed and broke the loaves, and gave them to his disciples to set before them. And the two fish he divided among them all. So they all ate and were filled. And they took up 12 baskets full of fragments and of the fish. Now those who had eaten the loaves were about 5,000 men. Amen. Amen. God bless you so much, sir. Amen. So I want us to pick some key lessons here for us to truly appreciate that indeed Jesus, he knows us. So if you take it to the verse 34, It says, and Jesus, when he came out, saw a great multitude and was moved with compassion because they were like sheep, not having a shepherd. So he began to teach them many ways. Now, a key word here is compassion. If you read the account from Matthew, you see compassion. If you read from Luke, you see compassion. So this only goes to add when the Apostle Paul recorded in the book of Romans that what shall separate us from the love of God. Sometime last week I shared an explanation to that and many people gave feedback. You know, what it means is that no matter how far we run from God, our love for him may not be strong all the time. Our affection for him, for his work, may win at a point in time. But the reality is that no matter what, he loves us unconditionally. And that's why when Jesus came, the Bible says he had compassion for all of them. And let me share with you tonight that wherever Jesus went, people followed him, not because everybody wanted to hear what he had. Not that everybody wanted to hear what he had to share. Some were only coming for miracles, just like now people troop to, to all sorts of places, knowing that this man of God, this woman of God is not preaching the truth. As far as they will get miracles, they will go. As far as they will get answers to what they want, whether there are consequences or not, they will go. So people follow Jesus just for healing, just for a miracle, just for a husband, a wife, or whatever. And then there are some who had also been sent to record what Jesus was doing so that they would get a case against him. Being a gathering, there were also people who were just there to steal. 
pickpockets and thieves and all that tricksters, they were all there just like any human gathering. But the Bible says that Jesus saw a great multitude. Jesus did not see only righteous people. He saw a great multitude and he was moved with compassion. If you read the Luke account, he, he, he told the, uh, the disciples, I, I have compassion for them. And that's why I want to encourage you tonight that no matter where you are standing now, Jesus is compassionate about you. Amen. He loves you unconditionally. He's only waiting for you to return his love. He knows you have gone astray just like me. Because I've walked with him for such a time that there are things I should not even see. My mind should not even uh, uh, go to. Yet from Friday, as I was saying, I was just thinking about things and getting worried. But in spite of all that, he looked at me Friday, he looked at me Saturday, he looked at me Sunday morning. Then he, he visited me to take away all that thing from my heart. Amen. He loves you. He loves you. He loves you. Now if you read at 35, he says, when the day was now fast spent, his disciples came and uh, they were just talking that they should send the people away. Because they were in a village. There was nowhere to buy food. And they were not ready to buy for them. They were not ready to sacrifice. So you know what? It gets to a point. When people you look up to will disappoint you. It gets to a point. When people you feel can help who close their doors at you, it gets to a point when people you have helped will turn their backs on you. But the good news is that when you look at the verse 37, Jesus did not look at the unbelief of Peter and the other disciples. He stood his ground because he knows you. He said, give them something to eat. Tonight, if you believe him, tonight, if you run back to him, tonight, if you allow him to be God over your situation, he will feed every aspect of your life that is empty. He will replenish every part of you that has been destroyed. You will restore every part, every facet. He said, feed them. And you know what? The same verse 37. And they said to him, shall we go and buy 200 denarii worth of bread and give them something to eat? And the 200 denarii, they said it is a half year, uh, what do you call it? Half year salary. So the amount of money needed to buy only bread, not KFC, not uh, Nando's, not mm. Mac Mac McDonald's, not chicken, only bread was somebody's half year salary. So if you are in the US and, 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 and your salary is about 50,000 K per annum or 100,000 K per annum, half of that it was needed at that point to buy only bread for the people. And that was impossible. Because remember when he called the apostles, he told them to leave everything, to leave family, to leave their work and follow him. The Levites, Matthew, the doctor, Peter and his brother, the fisherman, he just saw them and said, follow me. So they didn't have anything. They didn't even have, they only calculated that God, this is impossible, Father, uh, Lord, this is impossible. Even if we can do that, we need the half salary of, some, of, 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 of somebody who is working. They didn't even have that. Number one, it was a village. Even if they had money, bread was not available. 
And even if bread was available, they didn't have the money. That was the situation. But you see, God knows you in such a way that when everything proves to be impossible, when people have given up on your position, on your situation, when even you have given up on your situation, when you run to him and you say, Oh, era de maba. Where is Tilly? Wash me, cleanse me in the blood that flowed on Calvary. The blood that flows on Calvary. You see, it. thank you. It gets to a point when he just needs your faith. Like blind Bartimaeus. They said, shut up. Even those of us who have two eyes. We have, we have, we have not gotten his attention. They said, shut up. Even those of us who can walk. Who are supporting the ministry with our money and time? He has not had time for us. They said, Shut up. You've been here for 18 years, for 32 years. If you'll be healed, you have been healed. Don't, don't disturb him. But he shouted, Jesus, son of David, have mercy upon me. Tonight, we are talking about the God. Hmm. Who makes impossible situations possible? Amen. We are talking about the Jesus who said to man, to it may be impossible, but to God, all things are possible. There was no money. There was no bread. The distance from the village to town was long. Besides, it was too late in the day. Ah, can you begin to blast and say, God, fill me, fill me, fill me, fill me. Fill me and fill me. Begin to blast. Rashata la yamali katu. Randiri yamali kashandere yakasata la masukata. Randiri yamalu shaketele yamasata. Randiri yamalu shaketele shandere yamasata. Fill us, Lord. Fill us, Lord. Fill us, Lord. Every emptiness in our lives. Oh. Every emptiness in our in our hopes. Every emptiness. Of our feet, found so God. in our children, in so God, in our spouses, so God, Father, our our, careers, so God. So our so God. ministries, our nations, your church, fell, 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 fell. 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 Feed your children. Father, that emptiness so God. That emptiness so God. Thank you, Jesus. Bless you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Then he turned to them and asked them, How many loaves of bread do you have? They started going round. And I believe they found a boy who had been sent by his mother to come and sell. And at that point, People were hungry, but they didn't have money to buy anymore. 
And this boy could also not go home because if he does not sell everything, the mother cannot pay rent. The mother cannot feed them. The mother cannot take them to the hospital. The mother cannot foot their bills. So the boy was in a dire situation and the people too were in a dire situation and the, and the, and the disciples had given up. But he said, give me the five loaves of bread and give me the two fingers of fish. My brothers and sisters, for the miracle to happen, God wants to know what you hold and what you are ready to give. And that's why when the, 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 the prophet Elisha went to the woman, the widow, no, the prophet Elijah, he said, woman, give me bread to eat. And the woman said, oh, my Lord, why have you come to trouble us? We are picking these few sticks because I have just a little dough without oil. And I'm going to prepare something to eat with my son. And after that, we will stay till death come to pick us because all hope is lost. But Elijah said, no, don't give me bread. Give me cake. And that time the, the woman saw the priest was either mad or an evil spirit had come upon him. Because I don't even have oil. I don't have ingredients. How do you expect me to prepare? I don't, how do you expect me to prepare cake? But miraculously, the woman prepared cake and God blessed her to the point that she never has scarcity in the house again. Jesus will always ask you, what do you have? For me, I don't have money. All I have is faith. Lord, I have faith. Count my faith and credit my accounts. I don't know what you have. Some of you might have offered to his church so much. I would say, Lord, I gave this to your church to finance the evangelism team. Some of you will say, Lord, I am the prayer warrior. Some of you will say, Lord, I am the evangelist. Some of you, every department you are, God wants to see how you have used your gifts, how you have used your finances, how you have used your time and your body to fulfill your mandate on earth. And out of that, he will make abundance. Out of that, he will answer you. Out of that, he will take you out of your, your situation. He said, give me the five loaves of bread and the two fish. But listen here, the 39 and 40. Then he commanded them to make them all sit down in groups in the green grass. So they sat down in ranks in hundreds and fifties. And this is what I don't understand. I wonder how many of us would have been patient. We have followed you for three days. We are hungry. We need food to eat. And you are now telling us to sit down. It will not happen. The Zulus in South Africa will say, Ngege and Maso. It will not happen. Sit down for what? Sit down and eat what? The air or the grass. But you know, the priest Samuel told the king Saul, that Ohene wedim kwasiasem, you have acted foolishly. Obedience is better than sacrifice. When Jesus tells you to wait, wait, he has a reason. When you pray and he says, the time is not right for me to grant you your wish, understand. Your obedience is of prime importance to this law that we follow. He told them, sit down. And the Bible says they all sat down, they obeyed, they trusted him. 
I'm not sure they knew what was going to happen. I'm not sure they really believed that the five loaves would be now for them, but they still obeyed. And so when we get to that point, our obedience should be the master key. They obeyed, they sat down. The Bible says, he looked up to heaven and blessed and broke the bread. He looked up, he prayed, he blessed the bread. If it were you and I, we would just throw a question at Jesus. Oh, now what's the being? And now the Abedua, a friend now could be that panel, a cobon pie guso. People don't have that patience anymore. Christians don't have. That's why they come to you, you are a pastor, and you pray for them and you tell them it is well. They will tell you you are a joke. They will rather go where they will get instant answers. The consequence, they don't care. The source, they don't care. So somebody comes to you, you pray, you fast, you tell the person, God says, your answer is in two years. The person will scold you and go to where you have an answer that same day, that same moment. But Jesus wanted to magnify his father once again. So he lifted the bread. He prayed over it. He blessed it. And he started breaking. Oh, he started breaking. The five loaves of bread, Jesus started breaking. And anytime he broke, he would give to the disciples. And the disciples started sharing in the groups of 50 and 100. He started sharing. And none of them even thought of where the supply was coming from. They kept sharing until everybody had eaten to the full. Satisfaction comes from Jesus. It does not come from your pastor. It does not come from your apostle or your bishop. It does not come from me, your teacher. It does not come from your husband. Satisfaction, true satisfaction comes from Jesus. He is the mm. source. When you tap into that source, ha, you shall overflow. When you tap into that source, grace shall be upon your life. When you tap into that source, Ha! He will supply your needs. Amen. The same apostles, the same disciples who question him that where shall we find bread? For even if we will get some, we need a half sal half half years. A sal I mean, somebody's half year salary. They didn't even turn back. They didn't even sit to think. They kept distributing. And the Bible says, everybody at was satisfied. And when all was, were satisfied, the apostles, the disciples started collecting the, 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 the surplus. And the Bible says, they collected up to 12 basket, not just 12 baskets, 12 basketfuls. Brothers and sisters, that is the Jesus I'm talking about. I'm saying he knows you. Because when they sat down to eat, uh, 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 some accounts of the Bible says they were there were 4,000 men. They didn't count women and children. Some say there were 5,000. Some say there were 7,000 men. Whatever it is, what matters to me at this point, that even if they were a thousand, Jesus was able to feed all the thousand men, plus the women, plus the children. And there, was, there were 12 basketfuls of overflow. He knows you. He deserves your, 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 your faith your belief in him. He deserves your obedience. He deserves 
that you follow him and you don't waver. And when the time is right, he will command the storehouse of heaven to open. The husband will come. The wife will come. The job will come. The children will come. The promotion will come. Your ministry will flourish. He knows. You fast more than everybody. You pray more than everybody. Yet, the 10 people in your ministry, every year, five leave and you have to go and beg. You have to go around talking to people before you get two more. Hmm. But he knows. Yeah. He knows your bosses have been unfair to you. He knows how people have undermined you. He knows how people have stood against your progress. He knows the forces that are working against you. He knows, he sees all the meetings in the realms of the spirit against you. He knows what people close to you, people in family, people in your, at your workplace, people even in the church are doing against you. But follow him like these men, 4,000 men, 5,000 men. Follow him. Obey his voice. Trust him. Give him what you have. Your heart, your mind, your soul, your body. Give to him your time, your substance. Give to him. Because he's going to take that. He's going to multiply that. And the overflow. I remember one of the last times I ministered last year in a church. And all night I was leading. A man came as I was preaching. He came to drop something. You know the charismatics. You are preaching and people will come and drop. But when I started, God has spoken about that man already. So he put the money down. For him, the word, he had, the word was for him. So he thought, let me sow a seed. He put money down. But God has spoken about him. God told me he was, he was going to impact his spirit on him. So the man put the money down. As I was mentioning, he turned. He was going. I said, no, please come. Because God has a word for you. And as I started praying for him, the man just fell over under the anointing of the Holy Spirit. You see, he gave what he had at that time. It's not my church. I don't know them. But God said, tonight is his night. The man just fell under the anointing. And the change came from that night. Give him what you have. Time, your body, your, your, your substance. Your giftings, use it to work for him. And the Lord will visit you. The Lord will give unto you. The Lord will cause an overflow. May this be your portion. In the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. 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 God bless you. Amen. He knows me. Amen. We are praying. Just begin to pray. Just as the Spirit leads you, pray. As the Spirit leads you, just pray. Ta 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 ka ta la masikata. Rashandiriya malu shakata sata. Father, <laughs> Father, <laughs> 
Amen. 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 There is something happening right now. I don't know for whom this message has come, but just as we started praying, I sensed warfare in the atmosphere. There is a very serious warfare happening. And I'm not sure whether it is me or somebody, but it's somebody here. There's a very serious warfare happening in this in the atmosphere. So the spirit just directed my attention to Judges 520. From the heavens, the stars fought from their courses. They fought against Isera. That was a time when Deborah was a king. And there was battle. And the Bible says, and the stars fought for her. Oh, there's a serious warfare happening now. It's very serious. But when Caesarea wrote against Deborah and the, the people of God, the stars fought. Begin to pray. And your mic here. And all the angels of warfare. We rise to our defense, to the defense of the church, to the defense of the nations. Arise, O Lord, arise, arise, for the sake of your children. Arise, 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 arise. Oh, let the stars, let the stars, let the stars. Let the stars. The day in the time of Deborah. Your children right now in the Let them rise during this time of warfare. We cannot win this battle. We do not have the weapons. We do not have the wisdom. We do not have the strength. Ah, but because the weapons of our warfare are not Kana, oh Lord. Arise, only you, only you, only you. Can you battle and give us victory? Your manner over us. Our strength is people, oh God. Arise, oh Lord. Arise, oh Lord. Arise, oh Lord. Every battle against any soul here, those that are not with us, against our families, against our associates, against our loved ones, against our people in our networks, against the church, against your priest, against the sanctuary, against the Nations, against the nations of the world, we come against any such war, warfare. Over ten, over ten, over ten. Warfare in our homes, warfare in our churches, warfare in our neighbors, warfare up at our at our at our places of work. We come against all such warfare on the roads, in the airways, warfare on the seaways, warfare on the railways, in the tunnels. We overturn every judgment of the enemy. 
every blood shed hide us hide us hide us hide us hide us in your pavilion hide us lord hide us hide us hide our souls hide us Now, as this song is playing, I just want to pray that the Holy Spirit, the anointing will fill you. The anointing will fill you. The anointing will fill you. That's our last prayer. We need the anointing to stand. And I see the anointing falling like fire. Like fire, like fire, like fire. Pray for this touch. Pray for the anointing so you can stand. Oh. Breathe on us, breathe on us, breathe on us, breathe on us, holy spirit, breathe on us. Da mali, da mali, da mali, da mali, da mali, da mali, da ka ta la mali, ta ta. Ra ta ta la mali, ta ta di li a mali, ta di di. Ru kali kalo, shandi di a ta ta. Da ka ta la ma shandi di a mali, ta ta. I love your name. Fill us up, fill us up, fill us, fill us, fill us, fill us. Breathe Receive, 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 receive the anointing of the Lord. Receive the anointing of the Lord. Receive the anointing of the Lord. 
Let it be the anointing you need Ah, cry on him. Receive it. There is a in Jesus mighty name amen and so father we thank you Thank you, Father, for your word tonight, for your presence tonight, for the victory over demonic territories tonight. For the victory over death tonight. For the victory over shame and disappointment. And especially for the presence, for your awesome presence. We cannot thank you enough, Lord. But we are grateful that, you, that you've counted us amongst your children who have fed from your table, who have felt, who have received so much from you. And we thank you for the touch of the Holy Spirit, for healing and deliverances, for breaking loose on this mm. hmm. we thank you lord for life that you have extended tonight this you did not tell us 
I thank you for revelation. Thank you for preserving us. Father. Thank you for your anointing. 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 <clears throat> we pray. That this week. Will be free from disaster. This week. Will be free from bad news. This week. Will be free from death. This week will be free from attacks. This week will be free from any stress and any conditions that will cause your children to question you. We declare that your hand, your mighty hand, is working on our behalf. We declare that your blessings are upon our lives. We declare that your goodness and your mercy will follow us. We declare that we have recovered and possessed our gates. We declare that in all things, we are more than conquerors because you are with us. Thank you, Majestic Father. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Lord, for all you have done and all you are about to do. In Jesus' mighty name, amen.